Did gods really descend from the sky in Vimanas and use them for aerial warfare? From Sitchin's interpretation of Sumerian texts, the Anunnaki divided the earth into four regions after the Great Flood, one of which was the in India, the Indus Valley. And according to his research, the Indus Valley region was awarded to Inanna, Enlil's daughter, after she had persisted in clamoring for a kingdom of her own. Vedic culture is considered to be one of the most ancient in the world, and it is held in high regard by the Hindu religion. Interestingly, in these ancient Indian texts, there are stories of flying vehicles or craft, the Vimana, and devastating weapons of the gods. It's known that the first settlement at Harappa was built sometime between 300 and, uh, 3500 and 3300 BC, and about the same time Sumer came into existence. And up to now, five major cities of India have been discovered, Mohenjo-daro, Harappa, Dolarvira, Ganwariwala, and Raiki Garhi. The Ramayana and Mahaparata are amongst the most important epic Hindu poems. In the Ramayana, a war between the ancient Indian King Rama and Ravana, the king of Ceylon, now Sri Lanka, is chronicled. And whilst the Mahaparata serves as a record of the history of Hinduism and its moral laws, the epics describe the, the uh, details of wars between the gods and from fierce nuclear-type weapons or iron missiles, quote-unquote, to advanced aerial machines, which are referred to as the Vimana. In his best-selling book, Chariot of the Gods, the Swiss author Eric von Daniken wrote that he found evidence of the terrible weapons held by the Indian gods in Maosala Parva in the Book of Clubs, the 16th of 18 books of the Indian epic Mahaparata. Evidence of Vimanas in Vedic texts in 2000 BC, Atomic Destruction, David Davenport wrote about his work comparing the original Sanskrit text Rig Veda, Mahaparata, Marayana, and dozens of other ancient texts after having found what appeared to be an aeronautics manual in the Indus Valley. Among other ideas discussed in his book, Davenport dedicated considerable space to the uh, possible technical technological translation of the ancient aeronautical manual, the Vaimanika Shastra, or Science of Aeronautics, by Mara Maharishi Bharadwaja, which briefly describes the operation of the Vimanas, an ancient aircraft that sailed the skies around 4,000 years ago, and the equipment that aircraft used. His exhaustive study led Davenport to conclude that the text should be integrated with other Sanskrit manuscripts little known even in India, and never translated for the West. Vimanika Shastra is a Vedic aeronautical treatise by an ancient rishi describing giant indigenous airplanes that traveled between cities and continents 7,000 years ago. The text is claimed to have been dictated by a man named Pandit Subaraya Shastri before the Wright brothers took off in their first airplane, and it was the first revealed to the world in 1952 by J. R. Joyce and the first Sanskrit to English translation was published in 1973. In 1895, Shivkar Bapuji Talpadi, who uh, lived until 1916, the Sa a Sanskrit scholar launched an unmanned aircraft called Marut Shaka. Shakris Marut means air and Shaka means friend so friend of the air, on Chopati Beach, Mumbai. And in 2004, the Times of India confirmed, okay, so that was back in 1895, and the Times of India confirmed Talpati used the principles of the solar energy combined with the use of mercury to design his aircraft, and this refers to knowledge of the Vimana, ancient mythological flying palaces or chariots described in Hindu texts and Sanskrit epics of which the Pushpaka Vimana of King Ravana is the most quoted example. Talpada had a great interest in the Vedic Sanskrit, which afforded him insight into the Vaimanika Shastra to construct his aircraft.
Now was Dwarka, a city built by a god and attacked by the Vimana? Ancient Sanskrit literature explains how Lord Krishna, the eighth avatar of Vishnu, created the city of Dwarka. Before the legendary city was created, Krishna lived in a city of Mathura. The kingdom was consistently attacked 17 times in total by Jara Shanda, a tyrant king and ruler of Magadha. Dwarka is also the place where a mighty aerial battle took place. And according to ancient Hindu texts, Lord Krishna was attacked by a king named Salwa in Dwarka. The descriptions of the event are extremely interesting and ancient astronaut theories suggest the intricate descriptions of the battle hint at the possibility that some sort of advanced technology was used, even possible flying crafts or air, sp air spacecraft. Lord Krishna struck Salva with 16 arrows, with some shower, shower of arrows, in other words missiles. He overpowered the airplane, just as the sun in a clear sky overpowers the whole sky by an unlimited number of molecules of sunshine. According to the ancient Sanskrit texts, in possession of his aerial vehicle, Salwa attacked the city of Dvaraka, raining down mighty weapons that resemble lightning. And according to the narration in the epic, he possessed an aircraft known as Sauba Vimana and used it for air travel and for aerial warfare. Large parts of the city were destroyed in the attack until the god Krishna responded by firing weapons at his spacecraft. And furthermore, the legend says that Krishna eventually departed Earth and the ocean consumed his city of Dwarka. For many years, Dwarka was just a myth until the Archaeological Survey of India, ASI, established the presence of a city submerged under the sea near the temple town of Dwarka. Excavators from the ASI found remains of a citadel wall, crockery pieces and rubbles of a palace about 40 to 60 feet deep in the sea. So do these ancient scripts tell us that the gods did not fly like supermen but actually used flying, uh, flying machines, craft, to resemble modern spacecraft to roam the earth, uh, the earth? And besides, did the ancient civilizations witness powerful weapons like nuclear bombs? Well, we know that we have the legend of Atlantis. The Atlanteans had tremendous uh, advanced technology and I do have a playlist of the Emerald Tablets written by Thoth the Atlantean or Hermes Trismegistus and he claims that not only did they have space travel and inter, uh, interstellar travel but they also had interdimensional travel. And we do have the legend of the uh, lightning rod of Zeus, supposedly something like that given by an Atlantean to Alexander the Great when he went into the desert of Taklamakan and lost a third of his uh, warriors there because it was such a terrible and uh, devastating trick. He went there to meet a UFO and uh, an Atlantean gave him the lightning rod of Zeus, a copy of which is in one of the um, Buddhist Hindu monasteries in the Himalayas. So something, of course, uh, is inexplicable. And uh, it could be that they had very advanced technology. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. This is On Hows and Wise by Vicky Verma. Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.